and we hit up the farmer's market today with our $20 and we grabbed a couple good items so I did spend a little bit more I spent 26 and that's because I needed the potatoes this week so some of the items that we grabbed we're going to eat throughout the week such as the potatoes and one of the zucchinis the other two zucchinis have been placed on a dehydrator next i'm going to do our favorite basil so i oh it's dripping wet because i just washed it so i'm going to see if my son is willing to come help but the point of basil for us is that we do not do quarts upon quarts of tomato sauce in the home because my husband has to avoid nightshades as much as possible. And the best way to have a pasta, quick pasta, or like even a different flavor lasagna is via pesto. We can do cream sauce, but I find that pesto is so tasty. Matter of fact, you can add pesto to cream sauce. It's pretty darn tasty. So I tried my best to save up about six to eight half pint jars or quarter pint jars of pesto for small dishes, for pasta. And then um, at the end of the season, sometimes our basil plants go crazy and I'm able to get another quart or so done. So I have already preserved 8, 12. <laughs> 12 ounces of pesto. So I picked this up. The farmer had it for a dollar, so why not? And um, we're going to go ahead and get this picked through. And I will tell you exactly what we're going to do with the stalks next. So my son helped me to um, de-stem the parsley. We got it on the dehydrator tray. I'm going to put this on the lowest setting. It is, oh, I can see it's 11.30 or so. So these are going to take a couple hours to dry up, and then we will go ahead and crumble it and use it in food this uh, winter. Okay, so I'm going to use about right there, just enough to turn it on, and come back in a few hours. A lot of people complain that parsley does not have much of a flavor. It is a light flavor herb, but by the time you buy it in a store, it was grown, plucked, dried, and put into some type of container probably two years ago. 
and I don't care what kind of food you're eating, if it's two years old, it doesn't have much flavor. <laughs> Do not mistake. Do not mistake. A lot of food is not fresh off the vine, fresh off the plant, and into your grocery into your grocery store and into your home within a matter of months. It takes weeks, often years, for something to show up. So if you're looking for ways <laughs> not this <laughs> but if you're looking for ways to put fresh food on your shelf you need to first identify what in the world grows where it grows how you're buying it where you get it from etc so just because you buy from the natural organic place does not actually mean that the food is fresh for example tomatoes are grown in the summer and they harvest it depending on where you live, all the way up to almost Thanksgiving time. So that jar or bottle of sausage you just picked up is from more than one year ago. Yes, that's right. So by the time all the farmers who grow commercially harvest those tomatoes, get them into trucks, get them over to the factory, and actually cook down, place into jars, and then divide it up and ship out to the store and for the stores to actually take that and put it on a shelf for you to buy it, it is months, months and months and months well past the growing season, which is totally different from plucking up a tomato, taking it to the farmer's market, and you got there the next morning or that same morning and purchased it and did something with it in your home. The time frame is much shorter. The nutrients are more present and prevalent. So that's why we do what we do. It's because we are trying to find ways to make sure that the nutrients get closer to being in our body <laughs> than what you could get from it by it being months out. Okay, so these are the stems of the parsley and there's some that when I washed them, they got really kind of waterlogged. This is going into a bag, into the freezer, full of other vegetable ends, bits and pieces. Cause in the fall time I pulled that out and I'm able to make some fresh veggie broth. So I'm going to go ahead and get that in there. Okay. Here's my freezer bag. I have pieces of cucumber, onions and carrots, bits of squash ends. So I'm going to go ahead and dump all these parsley stems right into it. And clean them up, Mom. Thank you. Okay. Onion skins help your broth to be that rich, dark color. There is no meat in this bag, guys. This is just veggie scraps. This is just the ends of herbs. I do not put meat in here with it. That will be chicken broth or chicken stock. In this case, I just want to do veggie uh, items. I have some friends that come over that do not eat meat, so I want to have fresh broth ready for any meals that I might make for them. So I have here our basil stems with flowers at the end. We have already turned this basil into a lovely pesto. So what do you do with this? Most people like throw this in the trash and I'm not going to do that. What I'm gonna do is take some of them and put them right into our veggie bag with the broth. Not too many because uh, this is a strong herb unlike parsley. This herb will definitely um, overpower your sauce or your broth. So I'm just going to do, I thought I saw a big stem. Here we go. So I'm just going to do this one here. And then the rest of these will get composted. So it won't go to waste. And then this will get used to help flavor the future broth. Farmer's market dollar twenty challenge. Twenty dollar challenge. Twenty dollar dollar challenge. <laughs> Let's go. This week's farmers market challenge was very easy. Our focus was on green beans, and I so happened to see these lady peas or field peas there. I'm gonna rinse them through, get them in a better freezable bag. This pound or so is good for one meal for us with some leftovers. And then, of course, I picked up two dozen eggs. But now we're going to get these washed, clean, chopped, and into jars. Uh. 
Okay, guys, I want to show you my fun little setup. I got the large bowl. I'm on the edge of the sofa. And underneath the bowl is the plastic bag. I'm going to go ahead and for those who've never ever strapped, uh, snapped the green bean, this is what it looks like. This end was attached to the plant. And this end was attached to the, um, was the first that came out. <laughs> Stop sitting Can on I so what you're going to do is snap this end off in a manner that a lovely string, very fine string that runs down that crease, comes with it. Are you still recording? Mm-hmm. Just like that. Put it in the bag. Oops. And then the green bean goes in the pile. Thank you. We got more to do. This is about half of them. If I'm making a large soup, I can use one quart. If we are going to have a side dish like green bean casseroles, I'll use one quart. Other times, I'll just use half of a quart in the soup. So I hope you guys get your opportunity to go out to your local farmer's market, farmer's stand, or directly to a farmer for you pick and get some green beans on your shelf or perhaps anything else that is in season. I will report to you guys some more of what's going on at the farmer's market throughout August. But until then, I hope you guys come along. Hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye, guys.